Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah, shout hallelujah unto the Lord. Well, good evening and welcome to the Discovery Bible Study here at the Beltline Church of Christ. We are so glad that you've joined us. Let me join with my brothers here and say Happy New Year. This is our first class of the new year. Hooray! We made it through 2020 and now uh, we're starting into 2021 and we're starting with a brand new study. We've decided to go to the book of Romans. So we hope that you'll join with us. We're going to be tackling the first 17 verses of Romans chapter 1 today. And so uh, a lot in there, a lot for us to cover, but we think it's going to be a great study, and we're glad you joined us. And so as always, Trey, take it away. Romans 1, 1 through 17. Romans chapter 1, reading from the New Living Translation. This letter is from Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, chosen by God to be an apostle and sent out to preach his good news. God promised this good news long ago through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The good news is about his son. In his earthly life, he was born into King David's family line, and he was shown to be the Son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, God has given us the privilege and authority as apostles to tell Gentiles everywhere what God has done for them so that they will believe and obey him, bringing glory to his name. And you? You are included among those Gentiles who have been called to belong to Jesus Christ. I'm writing to all of you in Rome who are loved by God and are called to be his own holy people. May God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ give you peace and grace. Let me say first that I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith in him is being talked about all over the world. God knows how often I pray for you day and night. I bring you and your needs in prayer to God, whom I serve with all my heart, by spreading the good news about His Son. One of the things I always pray is for the opportunity, God willing, to come at last to see you. For I long to visit you so I can bring you some spiritual gift that will help you grow strong in the Lord. When we get together, I want to encourage you in your faith, but I also want to be encouraged by yours. I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, that... I planned many times to visit you, but I was prevented until now. I want to work among you and see spiritual fruit, just as I have seen among other Gentiles, for I have a great sense of obligation to people in both the civilized world and the rest of the world, to the educated and the uneducated alike. So I'm eager to come to you in Rome, too, to preach the good news, for I am not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it is through faith that a righteous person has life. All right. It is through faith. I love that finish (laughs) verse 17, that a righteous person has life. That's right. Or the just or righteous shall live by faith, uh, for those of you who might have a different version. uh, (laughs) Well, let's dive in and see what we got. Uh, Keith, what are our questions? First question is, what do we learn about God from these passages? What do we learn about God from these passages? It's kind of interesting that that my first part of the ESV is, I kept getting lost. But what I love about this is, it doesn't really say anything specific about God, but then everything he's saying, he says, but through God, with God, the mm-hmm. will of God, the love of God, God's will for me, God's, God's listening. And, and I love how he includes God with everything in his life. Mm-hmm. And he talks about grace and peace. And to him, God is not just some, something he worshiped on Sunday, Sunday night and Wednesday night. God is, is with him. God is there for him. God is, has a plan for him. God has a mission for him. God has, has wrapped his whole life around, around him and he knows that his mission is to serve God in everything he does. Yeah. And I just love the concept that God has a will for me. God has, has a plan for me. Yeah. And, and, I like that. and he's listening to me. And I, and I probably ran all around the tree on that one, but no, it's, it's just, I, I love his concept of God. God is not just a being somewhere out there, God is right there with him, no matter what goes through him. That's good. I, I like the idea of God as a calling God. Yes. It says that over and over. God called, 
Paul was called to be an apostle. And there's, uh, there's two things here. Uh, there is a specific call that God has for your life that he wants you to accomplish, things that he wants you to do. And then there's a more a generic call, like he says there in verse 6, uh, we're called to belong to Christ. And, and, and it's, not, it's not that he calls you to be saved and you to be lost and you to be right. saved and you to be lost. He calls us by his gospel. Yes. Uh, that's what Paul says in Thessalonians, that it's this gospel that calls us to follow Christ and to wrap our lives around him like you just he said. He is talking to us. That's right. Are we listening? That's exactly question. right. That's exactly right. So I, I really like that idea of God being a calling God. He has work for us to do. Uh, we're to partner with him. And, and I think that's the idea of covenant that we miss. Yes. When he makes a covenant with us, it's not, I'm going to do all the work and you guys get to just enjoy the benefits. No, it's let's partner together yes, yeah. in, 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 in bringing this, this, this relationship, this God to the world. I just think that's pretty cool. What do you see there, Trey? <laughs> okay, so mine is probably um, um, seasoned with our study that we're, preparation that we're doing for the Jesus series and stuff. But um, um, about God, okay, it starts off with God, speaking of God of the Old Testament. God our Father, Jehovah God. God promised this good news long ago through his prophets, right? And then he goes into, talks about Jesus, of course, and he says, the Son of God, when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. So here's the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. which gave uh, Jesus new life, which, which brought his, his physical body back to life. Um, and that was the power of the Holy Spirit. Of course, God's power, but specifically through the Holy Spirit is how God operated and made that happen. And he says, this is Jesus Christ our Lord. Uh, the, uh, through Christ... Now, God has given us the privilege and right. authority. And so he says, um, Jesus allowed the power of God to flow through him and to, to, to be the source of his strength in all the things that he accomplished. Now, through him, because that was the power that he allowed through him, we have the opportunity to, to tap into or to be a part of the power of Christ. Mm. And um, you know, he tells us this is, this is the good news. Yeah. You get to be a part of this. You get to take part in Him, and it's His death, burial, and resurrection. Mm -hmm. You know that's the that's the that's the good news, and this is the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, Jew first and also the Greek. Mm -hmm. And so this is this is a power that has been since the very beginning. You know, God spoke the world in creation. He He's given us new life in Christ, and now we through Christ are now uh, approaching His throne. So it's just yeah. a just a neat. Oh, uh, I love it. it the all, Godhead. Yeah, yeah, it all connects together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that in verses 16 and 17 as well. Um, when you think about, when we think about God's power, we probably think about a lot of things. We right. think about His miracles. We think about you know, parting the Red Sea. We right. think about all of these things that He's done. But 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 His dynamite, the the thing that that, that is most powerful is His gospel. That, yeah. that death, burial, resurrection, that life of Christ is where all of His power. Not all of it, but where the heart of his power rests. That's it, yeah. And so when you think about power, we think about these gigantic things, but it was this some humble submission of Jesus to dying for our sins that was really where the power was found. Yeah, that's really it. Mm -hmm. That's that's it. It's, it's, in that, it's in that submission, which is now our calling, too, is to submit to the gospel, to take part in this gospel. And, you know, in baptism, um, so often people think of it as this active thing, as this, you know, earn, you know too many times people will accuse others of, oh, you're earning something by mm -hmm. getting baptized. You're not earning anything. You're, in fact, submitting. Yeah. You're, you're, you're actually, you're it's being it. done to you. You're yeah. not doing it, right. you know? And so... Um, that's not what it is at all. But he, yeah, he says this is the power of God at work. Yeah. This is, I mean, when you want to see, when you want to know about the power of God at work, it's in the gospel. And, of course, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, it's the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that's why that's, you know, I, I like to characterize it as a rhythm. It's the rhythm of life. Mm -hmm. It's a death, burial, and resurrection constantly in my life and in, in everyone's life. We're constantly dying to things and being reborn. Um, we're constantly uh, burying things that are holding us back, getting rid of things that are, that are old or that are not what they need to be, and we're renewing being renewed again all over again every morning you know we wake up again right. and so this is the gospel at work in our life yes. I like and that's his power that's his power that, that gives you life that's why you wake up every morning and say thank you lord mm -hmm. thank you lord he woke, he woke us up again this morning and, and it's that power that is the motivation for our righteous living yes. uh, the yeah. righteous shall live by faith absolutely uh, it's where it's revealed it's what it's all about yeah. and it drives me crazy because it's like all that power sitting there and how many times do we just say okay i don't want it or I, I can live or, according to me. I, I'm, I, I can handle everything. No, I can't. Yeah. I'm gonna have God with me. I got. I got to lean on God. I got to turn everything. I got to totally submit to God, 
for that power to take over to help me move out. Well, and the, well okay, and so when you bring that up, it makes me think about have the power of words. You know, mm-hmm. the word of God is powerful, right? Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even our, our hearts, right? He, he, pierce, he, he can get right to our soul because of words. Mm-hmm. And so how, if, if God's word is this powerful and we just let it sit there, right. you know, and we don't access it and we don't tap into it, man, we are missing out on real yeah. life. Yeah. We're, what, we're, what we're living, we're living a counterfeit life. We're not living the truest life that we could and the fullest, richest life that Jesus wants for us. Right. He leaves his joy with us, but you got to tap into it. you got to be a part of it. So many people right now are suffering through depression due to COVID and just the time of the season. Sure. And, and, yeah. and if you sit there and if you start digging the Word, now I'm not saying it's going to cure everything, right? but it helps you see that no matter what you're going through, God is there. God yeah. is with you. God yeah. has the power to help you. Right. And, and we want things answered on our, our time scale, but we just got to remember, the power is there. God yeah, the is there. Right God there. is with sure. us. It is. And, and that perspective, really, I think, you know, especially going through times of depression and times of, of sadness, um, changing your perspective and seeking to change your perspective, I think, should be a goal for all of us when we go through a season like that is, okay, how could I see this differently? The best way to have a different view Right. Start right there. Go Absolutely. to the Bible. Go listen to, to, to the Lord and listen to him remind yes. you, hey, I got this. Mm. I got this. You you go preach the gospel. You go teach somebody. You go serve somebody. Go make some soup. You know, Take it to somebody who's sick. It'll change everything about your struggle and your sadness, Amen. and it will uh, it will turn it inside out so that you can give. That's great. That's, that's really, really good. All right, question number two. What do we learn about people from these passages? What do we learn about people from these passages? Um, after you, sir. Okay, all right. I don't want to steal mine. <laughs> <laughs> the encouragement we get from other people is so critical. The encouragement we get from text, from, um, okay, I, I hate tooting my own horn, but we had somebody with COVID, and I went over there, and I thought, I'm going to be special. I'm gonna, I made up a little bag of goodies for the kids, and I went over there, and I, I walked up to the doorstep, and as I'm setting my bag down, I looked, and it's like, man, there's stuff all on that porch from other people. Oh. And I thought, okay, my idea was, like, but, <laughs> but I love the thought how one person gets sick and that whole family's locked down, and probably 12 other people have brought stuff over there and just sit on their porch for that family. Mm-hmm. And I love that concept. We are encouraged. Just, uh, we went to Exposure the other day, and, and sitting there and hearing the, the teenagers sing, hearing us all set together as a family, and, and it's just the Beltline family in our little sitting area, and, and just hearing each other sing, and... Um, I'll be honest, it, it brought me to tears because because I'm, I'm listening to, and I sat next to some girls, and not that the girls sing better than guys, but the group I was sitting with, the girls <laughs> sing better than guys. <laughs> and hearing them sing just, just I don't know, it, it just made me realize the power of God is there, and uh, and I need to lean on Him more. Yeah, That's good. I like it. I, I go to, again to verse 16. He says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And, and I think uh, what this says about people, he says, I'm not ashamed because most likely there was people who were. And so it's easy for us to get wrapped up in the, the everyday life and miss the power of God and uh, to, to be more concerned about my reputation in the world than my reputation with God. Somebody preached about that not too long ago. Uh, uh, but, but that idea of, of, of shame and of being ashamed of something, how could you ever be ashamed of the gospel? I mean, but yet people are, and people, people do. Well, well, just some little history about Rome or Romans. In uh, AD uh, 70 or 50, that was when they expelled the Christians. Mm-hmm. And uh, this was written between AD 55 and AD 57. So it's like within seven years, these people came. So how many Christians stayed in Rome and were ashamed that they were Christians so they didn't confess, right. so therefore they just stayed there? And, and yeah. I don't know exactly who who was still there or how many yeah. people came in, but, but yeah, point. being ashamed. And, and how, how, are, how are we ashamed now? It's like how many times do we sit there and we don't want to talk to us about God? Or we don't it, don't want to invite people to church, and right now it's easy because invite them to the, the video studies and stuff. Yeah, and uh, so well, are, are I we think we're ashamed? we're we're ashamed or we're afraid that yes. people might make fun of us, that people might look at us different, they might say ask us a question we can't answer. There, there's so many reasons why we keep our mouths shut, but all of that is kind of a form, I think, of of this idea of being ashamed. Um, and maybe that's harsh, maybe that's too far, but uh, but I do think there's a connection there. What do, you, what do you think? So mine's so far out of left field, oh. I knew nobody was going to say this. So. <laughs> I'm sorry that it comes this far. All right, here's mine. Um, still there in verse 5. Through Christ, God has given us the privilege and authority as a He has given us 
this privilege and authority as apostles to tell Gentiles everywhere what God has done for them so that they will believe and obey him, bringing glory to his name, and you, verse 6, and you are included among those Gentiles who have been called to belong to Jesus Christ. And you're included. You will never meet a ordinary person. You will never meet a person who is not extraordinary. Every single person for it is extraordinary. God created them with this extraordinary possibility within them. Every single person eventually is either going to be such a spectacular, amazing, wonderful being in eternity that if you saw them, it's kind of a paraphrase of C.S. Lewis, right? <laughs> that if you saw them today, you would fall down and think you should worship them because of what they appear to be because they, they followed Christ, because they put their faith in Him. Or they are going to become something so horrendous and so horrible that you would, you would be completely overcome with fear mm-hmm. in eternity. And so there is no ordinary person. And our goal, just as, as the apostles, the disciples, the Christians, our goal should be to help them realize the potential that they have to become utterly like Christ, to become righteous, to become mm-hmm. washed, clean, holy, and sanctified by the Holy Spirit, and then used by the Spirit in this world. Mm-hmm. What a calling we yeah. have. That's good. There's no ordinary people. We all have a story to tell. There's no mere mortals. <laughs> Nobody's a mere mortal. Yeah. For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, whosoever believeth in Him and is baptized. Yes. Right? <laughs> I like it. I like Come it. to Christ. Give your life to Him. Hmm. I, I'll, I'll jump off of something else, too. <laughs> Uh, Paul says in verse 11, I, man, I long to see you. And in the context in which we're living, I, I feel a little bit like Paul, right? <laughs> yeah. There are some people yeah. that I haven't got to see, several of you, um, over the last almost coming up on a year now. Yeah. And, and, and man, there's just that longing that God places in our hearts because we are special. We are uh, we are more than just flesh and bone. Man, there's some, I long to see, and Paul shares that, right? As a person of God, he longs to be with the people of God, and he's upset that he hasn't been able to be with them and to give them a, a spiritual gift so that they can be strengthened. Not, not to say, hey, here's a spiritual gift. Look at me. I have the ability to give you a gift. Right. No, he wants them to be strengthened in the Lord. And Man, I so desire to see so many of you so that hopefully we can strengthen each other in the Lord and encourage each other together. And so that really hit me when I was reading that and when you were reading it again right now, that longing that Paul had. And I think God places that in his people. Um, And so what does it say about people? We have this longing to be together. And sometimes we ignore it, but other times it's just so right there in front of us. And man, I can't wait for the day. When all of this is behind us and we can be together. I'm tired of doing fist pumps and Yeah, I want to hug somebody. I want to hug. (laughs) Being from the Army, I'm not a huggy person. Right. But the teenagers have made me a huggy person. Now we can't hug each other. So it's like they've corrupted me. (laughs) And now it's like, we all sound like, hey. It's like, I'm ready to get back to normal. I long for it too, you know, and and I long to meet some of you. I know that, uh, you know, it's been like this almost since I've been here. And so a lot of you, all you know me is through this and every now and then I see someone, you know, at, at a restaurant or, or at Publix or somewhere and they're like, hey, and, and I have no clue and I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah, we were doing I, um, great till we hired Trey. Yeah, and like, <laughs> and we shut every, the door. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but uh, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's kind of like, you know, sometimes you feel like a, you, you want a banana. Other times you feel like you want an apple or an yeah. orange. And we all have different gifts yes. that meet needs in each other. And so, you know, sometimes I need a banana, and so I hang out with Jet, you know. And, <laughs> and, and sometimes you need an apple, so you go hang out with someone. You know, there's just, you, yeah. get, you get built up in yes. different ways by different people, well, and, and we and, need it. And that's what it says yeah. in verse 12. He says that is that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, yes. both yours and mine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, man, this day and age, we need that encouragement. And you think Paul is going there to be encouraged by these people. Mm-hmm. You would think it would be the other way around. Right. But I'm going to encourage. No, no, I want, no, no, I want from mutual right. encouragement. Yeah, exactly. yeah. How awesome would that be to be able to say, hey, I encourage Paul. Right. Isn't that the way it is, though? I mean, um, even in speaking, and, and we've experienced this through this time of, of speaking to crowds with with muzzles, you know, <laughs> with these with these masks on, it, it was hard enough to get an amen before the mask, you know, and and, and now it's just like uh, you can't even see the reaction. You can't see a smile or a frown. Um, at least every now and then you get a 
you know, yeah. you, you can see the, sh the head or you can see this, you know, and so that's helpful. Um, I was watching Dalton on his, uh, his virtual class and they do like sign, like baseball signs. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm, like, what is that? I'm watching him. I'm like, what are you doing? He said, it's how we tell her yes or no. Or if we're answering questions, I was like, Oh, you got to tell me more about this. Yeah, so, yeah. More to come, more to come. I'll learn it. <laughs> wow. Well, there's, again, so much more we could talk about with what this says about people. But let's, uh, let's get to where the rubber meets the road, Keith. Question number three. How will I put this passage into practice? How will I put this passage into practice? Um, I'm going to go old school on this one. Paul, in almost every his writings, he pushes grace and peace. And I love that because that's something we need. That's something I need to focus on. And 2021, I'm going to try to make a excited change to make sure that I focus on grace and peace. And, and I decided that the other day. I actually decided back in December. But, but I, I want to focus on grace and peace. I, I want to focus on God's gift to me, but my peace and my calm to the world because I am God's messenger. I want to make sure I don't. And this may sound bad. I don't. I don't want to make sure I don't offend somebody unless I need to offend them. Right. And um, so I, I don't want to be ashamed. I guess. Yeah. No, that's the long good. Story. That's so. good. I, I look. I look up back to what we were just talking about. This idea of mutual encouragement. I want to. I want to be that uh, for especially for the church this year. And, and I hope that I've been that in the past. But I want to make an even more concerted effort. Uh, to what you're come what, when, when you come here, I want you to leave encouraged, challenged. Yes, yes. and that doesn't mean I'm not going to challenge you, <laughs> but I want you to leave encouraged that hey, we can do this. Uh, we we can be the people that God would have us be. And so that idea of encouragement has been just weighing on me. It's been like a hand pushing me down. All right, Steve, you got to be an encourager. And so I want to. <laughs> I certainly want to do that as I think about how I'm going to apply this. And I want to be encouraged by other people. I, I want to see. I want to see their faith. I want to hear the stories of what they're doing and how they're reaching out to people and, and, and all of us be strengthened in the Lord because of it. So that's, yeah. that's kind of where I'm at. Um, mine's 13 and 14. So right after he's talking about this mutual edification, um, the second part of 13, I want to work among you and see spiritual fruit just mm -hmm. as I have seen among other Gentiles. And he says, for I have a great sense of obligation to people in both civilized and the rest of the world. And so he said, I, I've got a, I, I have a great sense of obligation. And I think that that is, um, it's God given. It's God um, inspired and encouraged. Mm -hmm. And it is encouraged by God through each other. And we should have a sense of obligation, every one of us, a sense of obligation, a, a sense of ought to. Um, I ought to say something about Jesus. Put in a good word for Jesus, mm -hmm. like Steve says. And, and everywhere I go, every opportunity I have to encourage people and to remind them that, uh, that they are special. And that, yeah, we're going through a hard time, but uh, we, we don't have to become hard people. We can be soft. We can be loving. We can be kind and uh, merciful and look more like our Savior and, and all that he's done for us. Amen.